My name is uh, Darian Aragoski Johnson. Uh, I moved to Atlanta a couple years ago. For, I was living in Denmark uh, before here, and I'm from northern Minnesota. Uh, my work deals with perceptual consciousness and a shift in perceptual consciousness contemporarily. I deal with uh, memory a lot and um, the way language influences thought and the relationship to visual language and um, verbal language and the, the, how the two are analogous to each other and how that influences the way we think and, and then essentially perceive and navigate space. My work is predominantly ceramic. Porcelain uh, is a huge part of my practice. The physicality of, of the material, the way it, re it, it responds to the way I touch it, to the way I move it. Um, uh, it, it relates to our physical nature, so we're not disembodied consciousness. Our consciousness is dependent on our physicality and space, uh, and so the material emphasizes that idea. Um, it, uh, I spend also a lot of time in a, the digital space, so I, I hand render images on paper or on an iPad Pro recently, and then that information is then scanned or sent to my computer, and then manipulated in Photoshop, sort of repeating information, moving information around, sort of referencing the idea of a glitch, uh, um, which talks about the sort of human element in the, the development of computers too, like there's humans behind that. Um, so there's, there's fallibility there. And then that uh, also sort of how that screen and the, the continued um, exposure to a flat recollection or a flat recording of a memory versus sort of recalling it from memory holistically. Uh, it sort of fragments and flattens your memory over time. So every time you recall something, it's, it's re-remembered. Uh, so it's recalled, altered, and stored again. And that process over time, uh, the flattening happens. So over time, instead of remembering something as a whole, you remember just the flat image. Uh, and a lot of other ideas sort of wrapped around that. The, the idea of the glitch was, was prominent in my work in grad school, and it was the impetus for where I'm at now. Um, it's, it's, the aesthetic has um, sort of maintained a place in my work, but it's sort of stepped back into the, into the background as far as what the work encompasses, right? So prior to the, like, in grad school, the work that I was developing, I would literally found out a way how to glitch a composition on Photoshop on the computer that I had, uh, and I would just force it. And then I would just take that information and directly paint it onto the work. So it was a one-to-one, -one, this is a glitch, this is my work uh, on a form. And it's very sort of simple, but still poignant. Like it, it, it talked about how um, information is disrupted, it still had connotations of memory, but then as I kept reading and kept thinking about um, what those implications are for, for our perceptual consciousness, the, my interest has deepened and then the work and the way I make Mark has changed too. So it's become more conversational at all levels actually. So instead of me controlling the form, now I set up a system where I make part of the form and then I'm hanging slabs by plastic and tape from above. So it's like this top suspension instead of support from below, but it allows me to sort of emphasize the sort of dance between myself and the material. And then uh, in, in, in that way, create conversation between myself and, and material and process. Uh, and the, the sort of meat of the topic of that conversation is perceptual awareness, uh, a shifting perceptual consciousness, and um, the influence of screens on our life. Uh, there's other ideas of, like, like I said, the sort of foundation of thought is, that is language, but we're still physical entities. Uh, the, the, the square pattern comes up a lot, and that's all, that is a straight reference to Photoshop. Like it's their alpha state, but that goes deeper than that. And I've seen that used in other people's work, but it seems like it's just like, well, I'm talking about taking information away, and they're just, here it is in Photoshop. But for me, it's more than that too. So it's another symbol for zero. Like when Fibonacci brought zero to mathematics, it fundamentally shifted that language. And so that reference for me is, is also about that. It's about a shift in language which allows you to then um, understand things in a new way. So that, that development of mathematics allowed mathematicians to understand things in ways they wouldn't be able to otherwise. Um, and that's sort of similar for us now with that space. So there's a lot of steps. Uh, a lot of layers. So there's um, 
these pieces are still drying and wet. The, um, some other pieces behind you are, are finished all the way, so the ones on the metal stands. There's another piece over there bisked. So when they're wet, I carve them and I add wire and I do the slip and the painting. Um, and I'll come and paint the squares in the background are painted on, by hand on, on clay. And then sort of that, that is a buildup of information that allows me to keep responding at every level and, in, and responding in different ways. Uh, and then, yeah, so then there's marks that are made and then the glaze is applied and then the image is then applied to the top of the glaze and then I come back and paint on top of the glaze. So yeah, each step sort of builds the, the piece. So like, again, like how we're built up at, from a baby into our conscious state as an, in adulthood. So um, it's sort of the building up of that. I paint on paper and when I do that um, or in the iPad Pro, I'm, I'm concerned with rendering as close as possible the original observation or the, the original photograph, because I, I record with my camera phone very impromptu. Um, but then it's, it is by hand, and it, it, and it, is to, it, it is a practice in which I'm attempting to represent the original photograph to a fairly high degree. And for me, that sort of builds an intuitive understanding of that observation. Um, so I, I think a lot about intuition and sort of a developed intuition. So it's not just like, oh, I made it intuitively. It's how do I train my intuition to provide the best output that I I'm not gonna be completely consciously aware of when I'm producing. And I think one of those ways is to train myself to understand that observation via rendering an, um, rendering a, an observation. But then there's also these really loose, um, marks and those have a different part of those enter the conversation in a diff, at a different point and are about slightly different things so experiencing learning a second language in a second country as an adult was a very poignant experience for me so i lived in denmark for three years and um there's these moments of of sort of disruption linguistically that affected the way you think and perceive again and it was a very interesting experience to be going through. Um, and so some of the marks that I make that are these underglazed pencil marks that are really sort of naive, really uh, physical, uh, and very sort of scribbly, that, that talks about that point in my life where like, you're going through this sort of base, like you're only, you only have access to a language at the base level, and how that sort of affects the way you're thinking, where a more sort of, uh, or like a deeper understanding of your language and a more fluent use of a language offers you a different set of thought than, than you do if you're sort of entering a language in a sort of base naive level. Um, and so I, I'm interested in depicting that in some of the work. So there's loose, loose marks that I have to respond to with these marks that are more rendered and more uh, about developing that intuition of that observation as well. Um, and they also talk about the physical relationship that we have with our devices, right? So some of those scribbles are made by hand, and there's a defined difference between the way those read to the scribbles that are made digitally, which have that sort of loose physical feeling of being done by hand, but then the line weight is very consistent. Like that wouldn't be the case if you were doing that with a traditional physical material. And so I like that duality of Mark, and, and that says a lot in just one, in one little moment in the pieces. I'm currently working on what will be my first solo show in Atlanta at Alan Avery Art Company. Um, it's gonna be in August, 2019. Uh, so I'm thinking uh, about my overall arching, uh, overarching concept and sort of making sure that works. But I'm also thinking about some specific things. I'm actually interested in um, projected identity for that show that might come up. I'm, I'm still like right in the beginning of figuring out what I wanna make for this show, but um, uh, I've, I came from portrait work or from figurative work and I'm interested in honing in on this idea of projected identity. I'm also interested in um, exploring ideas of, of still life actually. It's, it's considered a very based genre of painting but I think if I focus in on various objects and the way we understand and relate to those objects in contemporary times, it would be a good format for me to um, place the, the broader, um, uh, broader concepts of my work within that um, frame. 
So objects and, and projected identity are two, two concepts I'm thinking about for that show and, and how they'll relate together. So I've been in Atlanta Contemporary for uh, a little, about a year now, just under a year. Uh, I moved in, in in May of 2017. And the space has been sort of integral to my practice and the development of my current work, really, uh, between conversations with the other studio artists, uh, just casual having them in, being able to look at something and that sort of dialogue, helping feed ideas and sort of solidify things, as well as having a, more space uh, to, to create work. Uh, so I, I was able to get my own kiln in this space and um, sort of modified the space to my work. So I uh, have this wall back here that I'm able to hang stuff on right away uh, and see what it looks like and sort of develop work that is at a larger scale than I've been able to in the past. Um, and the, the, the way that this being part of the studio program has integrated me into the Atlanta art scene um, I've only lived in Atlanta for two years now, and, and I've met so many different people just coming through the studio uh, and made great connections and, and really feel like it's introduced me to uh, the, the, the community and the vibrancy of the community here in Atlanta. So, yeah, another big benefit of the Atlanta Contemporaries is being able to just have a break from my own practice and walk down into the galleries and, and see really fresh work. Uh, Daniel does a great job of curating and um, really excited to see a, a, that program while I'm working on my own work. I think it's really influential to the way I think about, come back and think about my own practice as well. Um, yeah, and that's sort of like extends dialogue too, right? Like the dialogue with the practicing artists here is fantastic. But then while I'm not um, in, in the sort of casual bump in conversations with the artists that practice here, but to their dialogue is extended via their work. And so to have access to that um, sort of more national and, and more sort of broader conversations in the art world is, I mean, it's, I mean, it's just been fantastic. I don't know how else to say that, it's been great.